Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another in our series of unconventional classics for regular kids. Getting your kids into the classics. Isn't that something that every parent thinks about and lies awake, you know, worrying and sweating and panic and chatting with their significant others about what they're going to do? Well, I have the answer. Now, the first selection in this series um, involved Ives Three Places in New England and, you know, the central Putnam's camp at Reading, Connecticut, a, a experimental extravaganza, which I think is great for young people. And there's a lot of music like that, and we'll talk about some other. But as part of my unconventional classics, I am going to throw in a couple pieces that you may find very conventional. But that's kind of the point. What I mean is they're so conventional that um, they're unconventional. Because when people think of classics and classics for kids, you think of Peter and the Wolf or you think of something, you know, the young person's guide to the orchestra. I didn't know any of that stuff when I was growing up. Really, none of it at all. Peter and the Wolf I did know eventually. I listened to, remember Tubby the Tuba? tuba? You know, that kind of thing. Those were, those were fun. By what was his name? Kinsinger, Kinslayer, Klingslinger, whatever his name was. He did those kid pieces for orchestra with narration. Well, I didn't want narration. I wanted just plain music. But I wanted that music to mean something. And so my mother, who was into classical music and who played it regularly, um, used it for specific household activities. And one of the pieces she used for a specific household activity was the can-can. That is, you know it, the can-can from, from Orpheus in the Underworld by Offenbach. And the can-can is actually not a can-can. It's a gallop. It's the gallop infernal. It happens to be the gallop of the demons in hell when Orpheus is down there in the underworld trying to get Eurydice back. I think it's rather fascinating to know that because it's not, a can-can is really a whole different kind of thing, but it became known as the can-can, and so that's how we remember it ever since. And it is an unconventional classic because, first of all, it's not the first thing you think about to play your kids. And second of all, it is a piece that sort of, sort of encapsulates everything that is most frivolous about light classical music. And I think when most parents want to, you know, attract their children, they do things like play Mozart in the womb. You know, they, they want womb music. And, you know, they only want the most profound and serious stuff. Who knows? At some point, they're going to be playing Bruckner. <laughs> yes, for children. What a horrifying thought. But the can-can happened to be the, the music that my mother used when she dusted. It was music to dust to, and it was perfect music to dust to because it was bouncy and lively and lots of fun, and she would get out her dust rag. Remember those? We had dust rags in those days. Now everyone just has like a Swiffer, right, with one of those things attached, and you just puff away at it. And she would bounce around the house kicking and jumping up and down and doing all this. I thought it was wonderful. And I was a little tiny kid, and I'd say, play it again. Put it on again. I want to hear it again. Dust some more. And she would give me a dust rag, and I could do the lower stuff, and she could do the higher stuff. I mean, it was just a great time. But there's a point in all of this. Why interest your kid in something so sort of frivolous and trivial as the can-can um, and, and try and imbue in them a love for the classics. Well, I'll tell you why. It's important, I think, very, very important for children to be exposed to classical music as something normal, not as something special, not as something where you dress up and sit like this with your arms folded like you're, like, like you're, you're trapped in Yom Kippur services in synagogue once a year, you know? Or, you, or in church where you have to behave and you have to be, be solemn and you have to be miserable. Not at all. Classical music has to become part of your life. It has to be something completely normal, but something you enjoy and look forward to, and you don't even think about it as classical. It's not special in any way whatsoever, and that's what makes this unconventional. And in fact, it's also a piece of music that you will still hear out in the wider world. 
It's just part of our culture. It's one of those classics that soaked into our cultural DNA. And that's important, too, because, because the fact that kids hear this music outside of a formal listening situation means that they don't associate classical music with, with unpleasant formal experiences. They regard it as something natural and normal. Now, the can-can, I mean, the tune gets used all over the place, most famously in the annual sale at ShopRite supermarkets. Now, ShopRite does the can-can selling ShopRite brand of vegetables in cans. It's a wonderful ad. Absolutely wonderful. The, uh, let's go, the only vegetables that can compare at all with ShopRite brand are vegetables. You fix yourself. You pick yourself instead of taking off our shelf. Now's the time to ask yourself, so why play, pay more? Now's the time to shop right now at ShopRite stores. You see? I mean, when the kid sees the commercial and he's heard the can-can already and he sees a TV, it doesn't matter how silly it is or what it's used for. It becomes part of your life, just a normal part of your life. And there aren't that many classics about which you can say that. That's what makes this one unconventional. It is a life classic. And I think it's very, very important that we find those life classics and let kids hear the originals and let them compare them to what they're hearing. It already stimulates, you know, critical listening, even though that's not what they think they're doing. They just recognize the tune. But they hear it in different contexts. and They realize that this music has its own kind of life and existence and character. And, and then when you play music without the words, without the canned supermarket food sort of things behind it or whatever else is behind it. Actually, you know, in the operetta, it's sung. It is sung. It's a chorus, by the way, but that's another issue. You can play that too. Uh, you know, they, they begin to understand, you know, the different ways that music can operate and how it's going to fit in their lives. And does that mean they're going to like run off and go listen to, you know, Peleus and Melisande? Well, no, <laughs> it doesn't. It does not, but it it already exposes them to a certain level of musical awareness. And that's what you want. You want awareness. You know, everything else will, will settle naturally. And so I recommend, I have this one right here. I'm going to play it for you. Um, the Overture to Orpheus in the Underworld actually is not by Offenbach. It was compiled later. And it's a wonderful potpourri overture that ends with the can-can. You can also get the can-can in Gaete Parisienne, the ballet by Manuel Rosenthal, but that's a very short version. It's only a minute and a bit long. And so, although all of Gaete Parisienne is wonderful music to do housework to, believe you me, you can do lots of housework. I mean, you don't have to limit yourself to dusting. You can vacuum. You can do furniture polishing. That's a very good thing to do to that. You can do laundry. You can wash dishes. It's just endless, the possibilities of Gaete Parisienne. But here, it's a really, this is a really hot record, by the way. Um, it's the Orchestra Nationale de Lille under Daryl Ang on Naxos of Offenbach Overtures. And, I mean, Offenbach's overtures are marvelous. I may use a few in our interesting overture series as well, probably from this disc, because there's some whoppers in here. But I wanted to play you just the can-can bit, which is the conclusion of the overture to Orpheus in the Underworld. You can play the whole overture, or you could just start at the end, however you want to do it, as long as you're moving and it's part of a normal daily activity. That is the key. So here it is.
that just terrific? Doesn't it make you just want to, you know, pick up your lemon pledge and dust the crap out of your coffee table? I don't know, it does for me. That's, that's just me. So that's one suggestion for how to bring classics into the life of your child. Keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.